Hi, welcome to High Brief Games. My name is Stephanie. And I'm Dave. And in this video, we wanted to just start this little series where we're just doing a happy hour, where we're just talking about different things that have come up, maybe on Facebook, on Twitter, or whatever social media platform in regards to board gaming. So in this video, I wanted to discuss a little bit of stuff that I've been seeing on Facebook. And I, I mentioned this to Dave the other day, and I was like, you know what, we should just do a little video where we're, we're discussing stuff like this. And part of the Part of the discussion that I wanted to bring up was I've been seeing so many things on Facebook where it's just so much negativity around board gaming. You know, people post things and they'll, they'll, they'll post a picture where it's like, um, you know, a picture of Santorini or whatever, Ticket to Ride or Catan or Carcassonne or whatever it is. And it's like these gateway games that are so awesome that these people are playing and they're having a really good time. And then people comment and they say something like, oh my gosh, there's like way better games you could be playing or, you know, that game is garbage or, um, and it just rubs me the wrong way. You know, it's just one of those things where it's like, this person is enjoying the game and you're crushing their spirit. To me, it's the, the gatekeepers. And, and frankly, I'm going to be blunt. I can't stand people like that. Yeah. I've never liked people like that, that, you know, what's going on that you feel the need to attack somebody else that they're having fun? Who cares? If you don't like the game, the great thing about the internet that I think a lot of people forget is you can scroll by. You don't have to say anything. And I've seen this in the past, and I'm not on Facebook or, you know, social media anymore. I just, I had to get off of it. He just hears everything from me. Like, I'll just, we'll be eating dinner, and I'm like, oh, I saw this post today. And I stay on it because, you know, there's friends and family that I connect with, and I'm jealous of you sometimes that you're off of it. But I stay on it. And, and for the most part, I do enjoy what I see, and I love being connected in the board gaming community. And I like staying up to date on the topics that are being discussed and what's going on in the trends in the board gaming industry and things like that. So I like to stay on it, but man, there are posts where I'm just like, ah. <laughs> yeah, and before I got off, I mean, there are a couple groups on, on Facebook and these had you know 30,000 people. These were large groups. And it was just one of those things that it was just so toxic. Like people coming into this, um, hey, you know, I play this game. And, you know, I'm gonna say even the one that everybody loves to hate, Monopoly, who cares? If somebody, if that's, you know, what they play and that's what started them down the path of playing board games, who are you or who am I to, to you know, knock it, whatever, you know. We all didn't start out playing, um, you know, Twilight Imperium or Agricola or, you know, whatever. Right. Uh, we all started somewhere and maybe it was Candyland, maybe it was Clue, maybe it was Monopoly, you know. And it's not just board games. I, I do tabletop games, like, you know, Warhammer, stuff like that. And it's the same thing. You get these, these opinions of these people that, you know, and it's really prevalent in, a, in tabletop. I've seen. Oh, well, you're you're running that army. Why would you possibly do that? Yeah. And these are people in the local meta. And my response has always been, "It's funny. I've never seen you win any large national tournaments. So, <laughs> okay, you're a big fish in a small pond. You yeah. Know, who, who cares? So they come and they're so excited to play, and then everyone shuns them and makes them feel like they're not worthy, and then they end up leaving. And it's like, then they have a bad taste in their mouth, and the, these people don't want to play anymore. And that's what sucks is like you've just turned away somebody that could have possibly been a really great player. Yeah, and you know, I've even seen that with board games. Some of the there's been times in the past I've gone up to the the store that we played games, and this is all you know pre-pandemic and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I've seen people that have made comments, and you can tell they're they're very condescending. And those are just people that, for me, I will never get along with. I'll never respect, and I just quite frankly have no use for people no. like that um, you can just tell the vibe you know? and it, it's funny and i was thinking about this they remind me of if anybody's ever seen caddyshack they remind me of the judge that 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 you know i'm better than you i've got you know all this stuff and look at me and i just i, I don't know i think we need to do a better job as a community you know there's been a lot of a big push to kind of be nice and everything else but that also applies to what what people like you know i don't I'm not a huge fan of monopoly my neighbors were trying to get them into board gaming if they said hey let's play monopoly cool i've got you know three different ones two different star wars whatever just that i've got laying around i right. will bring it out every time and i'm gonna play it because if that's what it takes to get people into you know down the path and maybe we can start playing some of these more complex games great that's a win-win yeah. for everybody they're having fun, we're having fun, and you know, you go from there. And I think that just gets lost as 
Maybe it's just because it's on the internet and everybody feels that, oh, I can say whatever I want and there's no actual repercussions for it. The proverbial, you know, keyboard warrior and stuff like that. But yeah. it's, just, it's always bothered me. What it boils down to is having fun playing a board game. So if somebody comes up to me and they're like, oh, yeah, you play board games? I play board games. I'm like, oh, cool. What do you play? And then they say things like Monopoly, Clue, or whatever. Even, you know, Ticket to Ride or these gateway, these things that we call gateway games. Nowadays, I really am trying not to be, like, disappointed because it's like... They're playing games. At the end of the day, they're playing games. And to them, those are the games that they love. And those are the games that they have made fond memories playing. And I don't want to have a reaction where I'm like, oh, those are the games that you play. You know, it's like, that's so condescending. And so you, I wish more people had that in them where they could take a step back and just go, oh, like, you know, that's, that's cool. You know, I, you know, maybe we can play sometime and, and then try to get them into those elevated games that you are playing or whatever you consider an elevated game. Because these games are, the chances of meeting somebody that plays Twilight Imperium or plays Cthulhu Death May Die are a lot less than me running into somebody who has played Monopoly, you know? Yeah. One of the things I said, and I've always thought is, that's what that person knows. That's what they've been yeah. shown. You need to look at it that, like I said, and I we had that talk, it's like, we didn't start out with this. Yeah. So don't blame somebody else because of, maybe it's not even just that that's what they like and that's what they know, um, have fond memories of. Maybe that's all they know. Yeah. You know, if you walk into a store, especially if you've never played, you know, heavy board games, walk into a board game store. It's overwhelming. And I think we just need to do a better job of not knocking people. If, if somebody likes playing Monopoly and they have fun with it, and I've seen this one too, there was a, used to be, and maybe it still is, I don't know, but, oh, send pictures of your board game shelves. And so people mm -hmm. would do that. Yeah. You'd see people putting pictures up of, you know, their shelves and they had Candyland mm -hmm. or Risk or, you know, whatever games that they had a kid, maybe they're in their family, and you would just see people tearing them down. It's yeah. Like, You're like, oh, you? you really need to expand and, your and, collection. And it's like. You know, people that are big into heavy, heavy, heavy Euros, great. That, that's awesome. I'm happy for you. That yeah. brings you joy. I kind of at times prefer the more Ameritrash. I like the dudes on a map. I like, you know, conflict and things like that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think we get so wrapped up into, oh, you've got to like this. Or we, we, we want to classify ourselves or put ourselves in these boxes that, well, if you're not part of this, then, you well, know, you just, you haven't been around long enough. And I think that attitude just needs to, needs to stop. It took me a minute to understand, no, this person just loves those games and that's all they know. Like you said, it's like, that's all they know. And so how are they going to know that they might like Cthulhu Death May Die if they haven't ever played anything like that? So I wish more people would, instead of crushing somebody's spirit, would say, oh, that's cool. Like, you know, I love that game too. Because even though you don't play it anymore, doesn't mean you don't have to love it anymore. I, I have a, a fondness and a love in my heart for Ticket to Ride. I have a fondness and a love in my heart for Munchkin, which I know people, you know, that's like a hot topic debating whether or not you like Munchkin. We played that game into the ground when we first started into this in getting into this board gaming hobby. I, I don't necessarily want to play it now because I've moved on and I have other things that I love playing, but it doesn't mean that I don't love that game and have a spot in my heart for it. And I understand why people would want to play it. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, you know, even in uh, some of our gaming friends that we have now, they like games that I don't. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I like games that they don't. And there are games that we know it's like, okay, I'm not going to bring out, um, you know, Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. It's just not going to click with them. And I know that. And it's fine. Um, just like there are games that they will play that I'm just like, okay, I'm going to play it. Mm -hmm. It's not something I would actively say, oh, I want to do this. Yeah. You know, part of games is it's supposed to be fun. Yeah. And, you know, and yes, I also understand not not every game is going to be a hit with people, and that's fine. But I just think, you know, don't tear people down for what they like or what they know. Because just remember, at one point, we were all there. We did not yeah. start this playing Twilight Imperium. We did not start playing, you know, Uvi Rosenberg games. When we invite people over, one of the first things we do is try to understand what kind of things that they like. What do they play if they play board games? You know, do they play Jenga? All right, cool. How about you take a look at this dexterity game, this other dexterity game, Men at Work, or whatever it is. Um, and it's one of those things, like, you have to try to figure out what the person likes and then try to, try to get them into games that you really want to play, you know? <laughs> and 
as you create those new memories with these people and they're having fun with these games that are very similar to games that they have played and that they love, they'll start being more open to playing games that you really want to play and that we really want to play. Yeah. And these are the games that are behind us. So if you use what they love and then you translate that into other things, then it gets them creating new memories. Yeah, and I think the other thing too is when you get people playing these, the trying out games for the first time, the other thing that it really, really can't stand, and it happens to me at times, is don't be that person to tell somebody else how to play the game and how to win and how to get the, the best possible strategy. Let them figure that out. And what we started doing is we've had our you know our neighbors come over, some of my some of my good friends, my friend and his wife have come over and trying to introduce them into board games. They said, Hey, we want to play. And I'm well aware, know your audience. Yes. Know that, hey, I cannot pull out a heavy game and say, this is their green first one. I'm going to lose you right mm -hmm. there. But if you play it also, I've tried to make it very much so that, okay, when we first play this, we're not keeping score. We're not doing anything. We're going to play a couple rounds so you just learn to flow what everything does. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the first game too, like I said, don't keep a score. Just, just learn it, then come back. And that's how we are when we learn new games is, we don't keep score. I mean, we can because I would win. I, I win 90% of the time. <laughs> There's comedian in the house, guys. There's comedian. Um, you know, it's one of those things. Like, just take it easy and don't be that person that's saying, oh, you're playing this wrong, you're playing this wrong, because now they're not playing the game. You're playing it for them, and that's not any fun either. So Yeah. I want to really try to encourage people to suggest games to people if your if your initial reaction is like oh man i wish this person would play xyz instead of abc then maybe what you can try to do is try to bridge that gap by suggesting something that is going to eventually get them down that path to play xyz so maybe instead of you know somebody posting about their love for battleship or whatever it is and you crushing their spirit it could be something where we're like, hey, if you like that mechanism where you're kind of battling each other and you know it's that that type of thing, then try Catapult Kingdoms. And I know Catapult Kingdoms might not be considered a board game because it doesn't have a board, but it's still that kind of battling thing where you can um, you know, knock somebody's castles down and you have these catapults and these cannons and all sorts of things. And it's like, maybe they'll like that and that's something different that they don't even know exists you know and that'll eventually get them down that path where it's like oh there's different games that are like unique that aren't really well known maybe or whatever it is that'll eventually get them down that path that are, they're going to be able to play those games with you that you really want to play but also be prepared too that they may not like that game that you may really want them to play this game and they try it and they just don't like it. Maybe There's not. Nothing wrong with that either. Maybe um, not, yeah. There are games, I know we did a video on Tapestry. That game is universally loved. I, I think it's okay. I'll play it. I, I don't know if I'd like the game. You know, if you, if you want, you can check our, our review video, on it yeah. what we thought of it. But, you know, and it's fine. If somebody said, hey, this is what I want to play, okay, great. Or, that you know, if we bring somebody over and they want to try mm -hmm. it out, great. I'm going to break it out and I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to play a game because it's, it's a social interaction, so. Yeah, I know there's just a part of me where I'm like, I have that, those memories of playing Cards Against Humanity and that game is just so frowned upon in board game communities. And I, I get it, you're playing other games, but at the same time, I understand why people love Cards Against Humanity because at one time I loved it and I understand why. But there are, to me, there's a lot of better party games that you can play and I'm a big party game person. I love, I love doing that. and. We just played just one the other day with our friends and it was so much fun and they didn't even know that game existed. And so it was like, if you start going, oh, you like Cards Against Humanity? Oh, well, there's this other card game. Maybe it's Letter Jam or um, Just One or anything, co code names, stuff like that, where you can be like, yeah, let's play some Cards Against Humanity. But after that, can we try this one? Because I think you would like it. And that's going to start getting them into the board gaming hobby, as we call it. You know, the first time when we played Just One, that was my first time playing it. Yeah. What was great about that, though, is that I think it creates a longer lasting memory of it because of just how you play Just One, mm -hmm. when there were times when you and I kept writing the same words down. Yeah. You know, stuff like that, and it's just laughing, like, how did you come up with how did you Out of all words? the words you could write. How did you, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's things like that, um, and, and that's what's fun with games. The other thing I would love to recommend for people is if people are into playing Clue, there are so many other um, 
sleuth deduction games where you can try to figure out like who the culprit is. There's, you know, detective, there's chronicles of crime, which I love. I play chronicles of crime by myself all the time, um, as much as I can. And if somebody says they love Clue, then I'm going to go, oh my gosh, I have this great game. It's called Chronicles of Crime and you might like it because it's all about trying to find out who the murderer is or whatever the, the crime scenario is. And they might like that. So that's exciting for me because I might get a new maybe player to play with me or I might introduce them to something that they just don't know about. When you start gatekeeping, you know, it, does n it doesn't do any good for anybody. I mean, it may make you feel better about yourself, but you know, it's not, it's not constructive. It's not helpful at all. I guess try and be a, be a better steward of yeah. the hobby. Do better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, these people are playing games. It's a game and that person's playing it and they love it and they love it for a reason. And whether or not you love it is besides the point that person loves that game. And so somebody wouldn't post something online and be excited about it if they didn't love it. And so we try not to push people away, right? Because we're trying to build this community and we're trying to be all inclusive and try to get people at the gaming table. And that is the last way to do it, um, is you know, pushing people away and saying, oh, you could do better than that, or I play better games than that. And it's that kind of vibe that people give and it just, makes people not want to play and that's not what we're going for. Anyway, if you like this format, please comment below and give us your thoughts. We'll probably do more of these. We have some topics in mind to discuss in the future. Subscribe, like, share this video. We love just to continue this discussion, um, try to encourage people to just be more positive in the board gaming community. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at High Proof Games. And that's it. See you next time. Cheers. Cheers.